Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Mark Nyssen. I should moderate the next session. And uh, I propose that the speakers uh, give one minute. Uh, can, can the speakers uh, uh, show themselves and uh, show they are present, please? Nick, are you there? Uh, here I am. Yeah, excellent. Wendy, are you there? Muted. I'm here. Good morning. I was okay. on mute. Hello. And uh, for Pangea, is there a person who is presenting? Yeah, this, this, this is me, Michael from Pangea. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All, all three. Uh, hello, Michael. I uh, would propose that uh, uh, Nick starts with a one-minute introduction of uh, his statement, then followed by Wendy and then Michael. Is that okay? One minute just because we don't have much time before the discussion. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm Nick Teberger. I'm from Paradisic, which is the Pacific and Regional Archive for Digital Sources in Endangered Cultures. It's uh, an archive of mainly uh, audio materials from the Pacific. It has about uh, 1,250 languages represented and we're, we're approaching 100 terabytes of data. It's been operating uh, for 18 years now. So it's a big data management task. Um, we've been um, in the World Data Seal now, uh, Core Data Seal before and now the World uh, Data System. So uh, we're very pleased to be part of that and uh, look forward to learning more from everybody here today. Yes, thank you. Uh, then Wendy, please. Hi, I'm I'm Wendy Gross. I'm with the um, World Data Service for Paleoclimatology. We're part of um, National Centers for Environmental Information and hosted by NOAA. We host paleoclimatic data. We've been in existence for about three decades now and have been part of the World Data Service as a World Data Center and then a World Data Service since the early 90s. We host over um, 10,000 data sets of paleoclimate data having to do with natural indicators of the environment, anything from ice cores to tree rings to fire history and um, We look forward to getting more out of everything that the conference has to offer today. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Michael, please. Yeah, we are also quite old, so more than a quarter of a century. I think we, the uh, Pangea was, was established short after the WDC Paleo. Uh, so it was at the opening of, uh, of the WDC DC uh, Paleo in, uh, in Bern at that time. Um, and Pangea is a multidisciplinary data center. Uh, so we are not simply hosting files or so, it's all relational. And uh, so we are, we are deconstructing in, in general um, the, the uh, submitted data into something that is machine readable. Um, but uh, due to the heterogeneity, so including also Paleo data, that was, um, uh, by the way, our starting point, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> and uh, due to this heterogeneity, we, we have a big problem with the measurement of observation types. And uh, what I can see here is uh, that due to the fragmented landscape um, in the area of the data centers and repositories, we need uh, a real effort here in, in trying to harmonize this because I think that one of the crucial things um, in uh, supplying interoperability and uh, what users really want, uh, they want to have integrated uh, data sets. Uh, so uh, leveraging um, the usage of, of data uh, from more than one data center, um, the harmonization of the measurement and observation types is, is crucial. Um, there are more things to say about that, but uh, yeah, for the, for the introduction introduction, I think. Yes, thank you all three. Uh, perhaps uh, we can uh, reiterate and go back to the main uh, topic here of uh, the interoperability. Uh, of course, fair data is one of the purpose of fair data is uh, 
accessibility and uh, breaking the silos of science uh, so that uh, multidisciplinary research can be performed. Uh, can we go back to the first speaker and uh, perhaps see what his experience and what are the main uh, problems uh, that have arisen for this? Um, yep, so I suppose the, the issue for us, we have uh, really qualitative data. Uh, we have recordings, ethnographic recordings, and most of these have a value outside of research. Um, so they have a value to the speakers. So these were recordings made by linguists, musicologists, anthropologists over the last 50 years. And often these were held in universities and they never got back to the communities where they originated from out in the Pacific, Papua New Guinea and other places like that. So part of our role is to make these um, recordings findable. So the whole fair, not just for the research community, but fair for uh, people in those countries uh, from whom these recordings were taken. And now we want to repatriate those recordings. So making them fair um, has an extra meaning, I suppose, uh, going beyond academia, beyond research and out into the broader community. We're exploring using the Oxford Common File layout and Arrowcrate. So this is a way of breaking out collections into completely open uh, formats uh, and thinking of this as a data commons approach. Uh, and it's looking very promising. So we've got a model working now of our 100 terabytes all in this OCFL RO crate uh, system. So um, there's more uh, that we've done, um, getting um, bits of the collection onto Raspberry Pis back out into places in the Pacific, into remote communities so that people can access this even when there's no internet access, for example. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a, a beginning, I suppose, of the discussion. Yes, thank you. Uh, maybe Wendy can add her point. You're muted, Wendy. Wendy, you're muted. Okay, here we go. Can you hear me now? Um, uh, like I was saying in my introduction, we've been um, collecting data for over three decades now, and we have over 100,000 individual time series, if you will. And we're getting to the point now where we're standardizing on formats, working with um, other organizations, so that they will be more interoperable as far as the data formats themselves. And one of our main challenges right now is taking all of our legacy data that maybe put a number of different time series and tables of data into the same file and breaking them out into our machine readable format so that we can then be more interoperable. And then we also value the standards and interoperability formats of specific communities that we work with, like the ITRDB, the International Tree Ring Data Bank, and also the fire history community via the International Multi-Proxy Paleo Fire Database. Then as far as um, metadata go, we have all of our metadata in an Oracle database, and then we output the various metadata standards, like DIFF was our first one that we really started with, um, and this was a collaboration between us and Pangea, and now via this standard, we do a federated search. We harvest their information and then make it available via their metadata from our site, and so this has been a huge collaboration, and then we have another one um, another federated search with Neotoma, which is um, pollen and other proxy types of data. Then another position we're moving towards with interoperability of metadata is we've developed a controlled vocabulary, a paleoclimate environmental standard vocabulary called PAST, and this has really facilitated interoperability and reusability. Um, interoperability because we are um, now um, we have a SCOS document that incorporates all of the terms and there's thousands of terms in it and then also we um, have a search capability and an API 
and we've taken all of our holdings and assigned the vocabulary terms and hope to collaborate more with this with the entire community. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for this uh, interesting point. Uh, maybe Michael, can you, uh, you already mentioned, Michael, yeah. you mentioned the harmonization problem. Can you uh, maybe be a bit more specific and see uh, in what direction this harmonization should go? Yeah, well, um, I, I do not speak about Pangea, so it, I, I see this more from this broader point of view. Um, so um, I think starting with metadata. Um, so the whole fair uh, story concentrates on metadata, that's, that's very clear. Um, in the context of the WDS, Pangea has been uh, running the uh, central portal for quite some time. Um, and trying to, to uh, harvest uh, the various metadata schema and standards and proprietary things uh, which are, were available from members. This is something that is, um, I think, um, not maintainable. It's, uh, it's too complex and uh, failures are programmed. So with metadata, we are more um, now going into the direction of what uh, Google has launched um, with uh, schema.org, uh, some of the major commercial players are behind, but um, still though we have seen, you know, that this effect is a lot more fruitful because um, the data centers are moving towards one schema, schema.org, uh, and on vice versa that uh, those having to supply metadata, harmonized metadata have to, um, to digest all of these different things, which um, is, yeah, is too laborious. And part of the metadata, uh, you, you've seen also that uh, schema.org uh, has community extensions like with biodiversity. Um, so that's another point. And an, a, an important point is uh, what uh, Wendy already mentioned, you know, with the past um, uh, terminology at uh, WDC Paleo. We also seeing these um, uh, different ontologies and terminologies um, um, uh, now, yeah, more or less um, getting into a very productive state. So like worms, for example, for marine species or uh, chebby for, um, for microbiology uh, and, and, um, and others, uh, which can be used right away. And in order to make um, the metadata interoperable, it is very important that we are coming here to um, to common usage of these um, terminologies. That does not solve the problem of uh, the, um, the harmonization of measurement and observation types, but it is one of the essential steps towards it. Um, in the RDA, we have um, uh, a group, a working group called iADOPT that is um, heading for um, establishing kind of a common syntax for building measurement and observation type names uh, composed of these various terms referenced by um, by persistent uh, terms in, in various ontologies and terminologies. So that that is um, a crucial thing. And what Wendy also said, you know, about formats of data. Here we are still at the very beginning. So most of the data centers or, or the, the simple repositories they, they store the files as they come in. So, and, um, so you not, do not only have to cope with the various MIME types, but in general, the data are not really consistently structured and, uh, and the naming of headers and all this, you know, this is uh, far away from interoperability. So even if we have one or two data centers like um, Paleo, yeah, um, if you are able to to uh, make all these different uh, in the data inventories that you have at uh, Paleo uh, consistent, yeah, even then you know with, this is only a small section of what is available worldwide. And so, I think we need to um, address this point uh, in more detail, um, very clear. Yeah, and the last point that I have is about um, fairness, um, the fitness for use of the data. Um, we also need to learn the users which data are fair or not. 
So here we have this RDA group fitness for use. Now there is an H2020 project, Fair is Fair, trying to um, somehow um, summarize, you know, what is what is needed in order to to uh, judge about the uh, fairness of an individual data set, which is different from Cortra Seal. But the intention is certainly, you know, to get this embedded into Cortra Seal latest in 2022. Um, so this could be maybe lead to some kind of batch um, on the splash page of data sets, you know, showing the fairness of the data set which will help very much in the usage of the day. Okay, that's what I have to say. Well, I, I thank you all three very much. We really, with the time that we had, we couldn't have a large discussion, but uh, very interesting points were risen. Uh, I think we are already uh, almost 10 minutes over time, so uh, I don't know if we still have uh, time to go around the tree uh, to to enrich the discussion. I think, uh, Mark, we're going to need to move on. I apologize. This is more or less uh, just a teaser, I'm afraid. Um, we just don't have time for everybody to to go back to, to that topic. But that, thank yeah, you, for the panelist. So um, one thing to mention is we will save the questions and, and pose them to um, everybody afterwards. So um, if, if, um, if you've posed a question and it hasn't been answered, then um, you will, we'll see if we can get a response for you. Thanks. Then, then I thank the, the three contributors and uh, look forward to see you uh, in the next uh, panels and uh, the next uh, sessions of uh, this conference. Thank you very much, all of you. Yep.